Oh yes, he cares. Let all the church. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His love, his touch with my grief. When the days are weary, the Lord, not scary, I know my Savior. And the ladies, now Jesus cares. Because of that, he came to this world, he died for you and for me, and now we have victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand and start our Sabbath school by singing victory in Jesus. Let's all stand for our opening song. For those who know the song, let's sing louder than others because I think majority doesn't know and that they're gonna learn it today so for those who know please bear with me and uh, help me with that Though we still don't have the lyrics, but we, I think we're gonna we just sing like this. So we'll just sing like this. came from glory to Beneath the cleansing blood, 
I heard about his healing, all this cleansing power revealing, how we made a lamb to walk again, and called the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought the wind of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. I heard about a man is with me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some trees. Of the, the song of victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sold me and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me. me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let us all kneel as we pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this day. We thank you, Father, for bringing us together in this place to worship thy name, and we know that you are with us. This moment, Father, we like to pray that you may please accept us as we are and help us to dwell in thy presence. We pray that you may forgive all our sins and cleanse us and renew our relationship with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and blessed Sabbath day, everyone. Um, to welcome everyone, everyone, let us greet our brethren a happy Sabbath and tell them that you are a son or a daughter of God as we sing, I am a part of the family of God.
Praise the Lord that God enables everyone to join us in our worship as Ahija Ministry is celebrating the four years of goodness from the Lord upon, the, upon this ministry. Now, as we go through our worship uh, this blessed Sabbath day, let me introduce to you the facilitators of our program to render it to God's service. The one that led through inspiration was serving by Brother Adelino. For the opening prayer, it was from the Disciples of Agape Ministry. And after me, we will be seeing a special feature by Ancient Words Ministry. And before we hear an before we hear a Adventist mission talk by Brother Johnny, we will be hearing a message through song by Vocal 7. And after mission report, we will go to our Sabbath school group discussion that will be facilitated by the Hija members. Discussion will be given 30 minutes. And after that, one of the disciples of an unveiling ministry would give the summary of the lesson and closing song by the song leader and closing prayer by Josh. And God bless us all in this congregation as we seek and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth this special day. God bless. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sabado. Wow. Thank you. Uh, I really miss home. That's why I greet my people in Portuguese. Feliz Sabado. That's how we greet in the in a, in a, in a Sabbath day. We say Feliz Sabado. That's, this is Happy Sabbath. All right. Uh, for our special feature, I want to invite you to open your Bible. In the book of Matthew 9. Uh, but before that, I want to tell you a story. When I was a student in COT, we really struggle with our thesis in our exams. Yesterday, we were talking about cheating. And as a pastor, you are not supposed to cheat. You should be an example. And my friend, you, he always used to remind us, if you don't know, just say that Jesus is the answer. That's what we, we, we used to say to remind ourselves. Jesus is the answer. If you don't know, uh, Jesus is the answer. So, I want to invite you to open your Bible in the book of Matthew 9. Matthew 9. But before that, I invite you to bow your head as we pray. Faithful Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. As now as we come here looking for the solution. We pray that we might find you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew 9. Uh, before we go to the Bible, let me ask you a question. How many of you is facing a problem right now? One problem. Only one. Okay. How many of you are facing two problems? Two. Wow. Two. Few hands. How many of you are facing three? Wow. Four. What about 20 problems? Are you facing 20 problems right now? How many of you are facing 365 problems right now? I mean, be honest. 350 or 365 problems right now. Financial problems. Your grades are going down. Your GPA is going down. Uh, your relationship is going down, your parents, it's all the problems that affect us. How many of you are facing 365 problems? I think no one, to be honest. I believe no one of us is facing a lot of these problems. You know why? Otherwise, you, but you, you'll be dead at this time. It's a lot of problems. It's a lot of problems. So as we look to the Bible, the Bible revealed to us more than 360 promises. Meaning to say, if you take every day one promise from the Bible, you will live a happy life. Amen? I'll say that no one of us has 360 problems. You might have 2,000 or 
close to that, you might have a lot of problems, but we'll find out why. First of all, I want to, I want to start by clarifying that we all face some trouble, some problems in our life. You know why? It tells us the reality of the great controversy, the fight between good and evil. It's real. That's why we all face problems, right? So, I want to invite you to go to the book of Matthew, Matthew 9, verse 27 to 31. The Bible says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have a mercy on us. Verse 28. And when he was come into the house, uh, the blind man came unto him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe he that I am able to do this. And they say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Verse 30. And their eyes, their eyes were opened, and Jesus straight, straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Verse 30. Uh, but they went, but they, when they were departed, uh, spread abroad his fame, his fame in all the country. As you see the story, this happened after Jesus has called to life, again, called to life the daughter of Jairus. You know the story. On his way, Jesus found two men. Uh, these two men, they were blind. They were blind and they were following Jesus. Uh, they were blind and they were following Jesus. They were going after Jesus. And they cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And they, when they went and they met Jesus, and when they encountered Jesus, uh, Jesus told them, if they believe uh, that Jesus can do these things, to, Jesus can heal them, and they say, we believe. First thing that these men had, they acknowledged Jesus as the son of David, meaning to say they acknowledged Jesus as the king of the, of the people of, of Israel. They acknowledged Jesus, and they so believe that Jesus can cure, can heal uh, them. That's what they believe. You know why? And that's why, you know why they, they, I, I'm assured that they believe that Jesus can heal them? Because Jesus says, be it done according to your faith. They have faith in Jesus and, Jesus, and they, their eyes were open and they saw. Uh, these men, uh, they know the situation. Uh, they know that they are blind and they know where to find a solution. Uh, they know that they are sick and they know that they need a physician. Uh, they went after Jesus. They heard many stories about Jesus. Once we, they know their problem, they went after uh, the solution. And the solution was found in Jesus. As you see throughout of the Bible, since the fall of man, God has provided Jesus as the solution of all our problems. Most of us, we face a lot of problems and we take it to ourselves. And Jesus invites us, come unto me, and I will give you my rest. And Jesus invites us to come to him, but before we come to him, we should believe that he can, he is the solution of our problems. And it will be done according to our faith. I know that some of us, we are facing a lot of problems. I want to invite you, I want to remind you that Jesus is the solution of our problems. Amen? Well, <clears throat> as we're continuing with our special future, we're going to definitely give solution, but there is no solution without. Before there is a solution, there is a problem as well. So I want to ask you a simple question today. And uh, we're going to be honest. Yes, yes, I have five minutes. I won't take more than that. So the question is, answer... How many of you have bought an item in Okai Okai? Just be honest. Thank you, my brother. Ladies, I know you have bought something in Okai Okai. How many of you have bought something in Okai Okai? Okay? I'm going to put it in Portuguese. How many of you have bought something in Areo Areo? Okay? So, 
the reason why I ask you this is because when you buy a certain item in your car, your car, you need to bark for it, isn't it? They do, they, however, they have a fixed price, but they are willing to give you discount. Are we together on this? So now, this place called Ukai Ukai is a place where you can even suggest your price. We're going to look at the book of Numbers, chapter 32. Which book did I say? Numbers 32, verses 4 to 5. The Bible says, Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land of cattle, and thy servant have cattle. Wherefore, say they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servant for a possession, and bring us not over to Jordan. Time will not allow us to describe what has taken place, but we all know that this is the story of the, the, the Israelites when, they were, when God told them to go and fight for the Midianites. And then they were fighting for the Midianites. God have told them to go and fight because God will be with them. God will even overcome them for the, 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 the tribe for themselves. But then the question was not what they have done, but what they thought of doing. We see that there are two tribes described, the tribe of God and the tribe of Reubenites. And now these two tribes decided to approach Moses and ask him if he could at least give the land that they have seen it will is a land of good possession. Now we know that God when com commanded Moses he in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 he then tell Moses that I want you to take my people because I'm going to take them to a land flow of honey and milk. God was giving Moses a certain mission, and he knew how he would take them to a certain place. But along the way, something happened. These two tribes, and the Bible also recalls, half of them have approached Moses. They say, we have seen that this land is good. We therefore don't want to go into the land that God promised us. Now, there are two things we need to understand when you study the Bible, we need to understand the character of that individual. We all know that Reuben was a man of unstable character. He was not so sure how to divide himself or how to give decisions. And we also know that the other, the other brother who is God, he was a man who, however, is a strong man, but still was not faithful. Now, the question was, and the question is still permanent, what can we do? To maintain our relationship with Christ. God has given us a place where we, go, we want to go. God has given them a place they were supposed or they will go, but then along the way they were confused to decide if they still carry on with the mission of God. One thing we need to remember is if you have a double mind, God will not like you. If we do not decide if you are with him or with, against him, we need to consider certain elements in our life, which is we need to decide where and how we want to go with God. So question number one, and, and solution for this is, make sure you decide to renew your relationship with Christ. And how we do that? Every day we are to renew our relationship with Christ with the single step, which is devotion and belief in Christ. We know that in as much that God has promised us something, we know that when if uh, 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 for the ladies, that man, that tall, handsome brother will come and say, baby, that will be the reason for you to leave your bra in his house. But God is saying, make sure you know what you have asked for. May God bless us.
So good morning, everyone. So while we are <coughs> waiting, everything to be settled. Uh, so we're going to sing a song that is appeal for each one of us to renew our relationship with Christ. This song invites us to give our hearts. And as my friend used to say, God never has something that we don't have. And I believe that each one of us has a heart. Is it true? I think nobody's listening to me. There is somebody without heart in this very hall? No. And this, I believe this song is for each one of us as well for me. Invite, Jesus invites us to give our hearts to him. And this is my humble prayer that you may ponder upon this message and afterward, as you listen, you'll be directed to do something and it's rely upon you. For many times you've been fighting alone In worldly desire you waste all your strength But at the end of these things You've come to realize that Jesus is the way Jesus the way End of the pleasure of this world can satisfy the anger that he will never fail you. All that you need to do is giving your life all to the Lord. Jesus, a spotless lamb can make your sins whiter than snow.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and a happy Sabbath to you all. There appears to be a slight technical issue, but as the technical guys do what they know best, <laughs> I'll proceed. Ahija Ministry is a group of young people who have dedicated their lives to serving God in every way, <clears throat> with the ultimate goal of leading people back to Christ. By means of evangelistic meetings, AY programs, church services, social media, all forms of media, uh, the Holy Spirit keeps showering its blessings on the ministry so that by gr God's grace and power, we are able to share the Lord's message with the masses. Every video clip, every Bible message we share, every AY, every Bible study is a step closer to bringing people to God. Just like every other ministry guided by the Holy Spirit, our main purpose is leading people back to God because, <clears throat> because never has there been such a crucial time that we ought to lead people to God. As you read in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest send forth laborers into his harvest. And John 4, 35 says, Say not ye that there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, that look up, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields for the harvest is already white. For those who are already part of a ministry, I pray that God will continue guiding you and blessing you as you, lead people, as you continue leading people to God. But if you have not yet joined a ministry, then I encourage you to join Ahija. If you feel, if you feel God calling you to do his work, then come to one of the Ahija men, uh, members or go straight to Ayas. The Lord is calling us all to do his work, and Ahija is focused entirely on leading people back to God. I like Why do we do this, you ask? Well, the answer is found in one verse, John chapter 17, verse 3. I encourage you all to turn there. It says, And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. May you also be inspired to answer God's calling for your life. For the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. May God bless you further. I like it because it's the first time God is mentioned. It's also the first verse in the Bible. That I like it because it's the first time God is mentioned. It's also the first verse in the Bible. That chapter has 31 verses and God is mentioned 32 times. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It reminds me that God existed before me. So I am not God, only God is God. And if God is in the beginning of everything I do, I will be successful and I will remain on the right path. That is my favorite verse. My favorite Bible verse is found in Psalms 144 verses one and two. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge. In this Bible verse alone, I'm reminded every day that God is sufficient enough for me. He's all that I need and all that I'll ever need. And at times of despair, I can find hope in Him.